So tell me, folks, would you rather watch my movie review or jab yourself in the leg with an ice pick? You have 15 seconds. Yes, my friends, welcome back to the show that never ends. Glad you could attend. Come inside the tent today with the movie man as we take a look at Would You Rather. It's a film that's directed by David Guy Levy who's brought us the story of Iris, a woman who is taxed with taking care of her very ill brother. Well, she's having trouble with paying for medical bills. Uh, he's on a donor list but doesn't look much hope there of getting a donor. And she's even having a trouble finding a job. So she's just in some major dire straits. Well, when she comes across paths with a rich gentleman who promises that he could take care of her financial woes as well as uh, help find uh, uh, some help for her brother. It's an uh, offer she just can't refuse. And all she's got to do is show up to a dinner party with some other folks and play a game. And if she wins the game, she gets the riches that are promised to her as well as uh, the help for her brother. And we see what happens there as she arrives to the dinner party and finds all is not as what it seems as they end up having to play a sadistic game of Would You Rather, where in order to win the game, you have to survive the game. Yes, folks, Would You Rather on the surface looks like your standard kind of torture porn film a la Hostel or the later Saw films, but here we've got a little more depth, a little more meat, and a little more thought put into this independent film. Now, for one, most of it takes place in a single room, and the director, David Guy Levy, definitely does a great job of building up tension in the room as these people play out this game with the sadistic rich man looking on. He really does this great building up tension thing, and all the actors uh, do very well in their performances. We see Brittany Snow's Iris is beautiful and perfect as the Iris character, or the tragic character who doesn't really want to be there in the first place, and then she finds out what she has to do, and she's got that conflict in her, and it really comes across the screen. Now the other seven characters in the room as well do very well. We've got Sasha Gray playing a girl who seems troubled and I liked Sasha's great performance in this. While I didn't quite care for her in the girlfriend experience, in this one for the short amount of time she actually gets to exercise some acting chops, she does really well in it. I, I liked her character and her screen presence. Then you've also got John Hurd in here as a uh, recovering alcoholic and I, I loved his character and his performance as well, but John Hurd is great and also a very busy man, but definitely great in this as well. You may even recognize Enver uh, Jakaj in here. He played Anthony in Dollhouse. He's in here as well. But Jeffrey Combs definitely playing the overtop rich man, uh, definitely helps steal some of the show in here. In every scene he's in, he's just over the top and, and great in the role that uh, he's cast in. Definitely a perfect pick there for that. Now, what I loved is uh, the writing in this film, it's well paced for it being taking place in pretty much a single room. And the uh, the tests that they have for Would You Rather uh, definitely are creative and don't seem too gimmicky. A little bit, but not a whole lot. Unlike your Hostels and, and Saw here, these uh, really seem a little bit more realistic and though they are twisted in their uh, being thought out. So I really liked that as well. There, there aren't, it doesn't get too gimmicky and then where it could get very gimmicky in it. So definitely enjoyed that. I also like the fact the way they wrote these characters. Once they find out just how things are going to play out in this game, they do actually try to uh, escape the game that they can't escape in, which I really liked that twist as well. Uh, not giving too much away there. You can tell uh, by the trailer for that. Uh, in just in general, this film does really well in building up tension and building up a suspense and making you wonder and guess just will these people survive and who will survive to the end of the game. Uh, you know, and, and it crushes hope, too. You, just when you get some hope for these characters, it crushes it as well, as well as it should. And it's got a very twisted ending that uh, I, I just before they did it, I kind of was like, oh, they're not going to go there. They went there, definitely. And, you know... It, in true independent nature fashion, you never guess how the film's quite going to end. So I think that was going to be a surprise for you as well. 
Overall, Would You Rather is definitely worth your time. But the only uh, weak point that I had with it was the fact of we don't get to learn too much about the other characters. Now that may be what the director was going for. Since it's all told through the perspective of Iris, we try to find out th about the characters around the dinner table, at the dinner table, through Iris's eyes. And if that's what he's going for, he does capture that. But though I don't always care for flashbacks, I would have liked to have seen a few for the other people around the table so we could kind of care for them. But perhaps the director was going for uh, you feeling for Iris and seeing how she would care for these people rather than your own feelings for caring for these people. And maybe that's what he was going for. But outside of that, everything else is a decent, solid three and a half stubs from the Movie Man for Would You Rather, worth the price of video on demand. And I hope you can catch it there on your PS3, on, on your video demand sources, or if by chance it is playing in a limited theater nearby, go and check it out, at least for if there's an early show or something, because it's definitely worth your time and definitely an interesting take on the old torture story. And that'll about do it for us here at the final cut. Until next time, keep that to